Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this joint webinar between Fieldtrust uh, and Red Star. My name is Bart Kuipers, uh, Managing Partner at Fieldtrust. Today, we'll look at how it's possible for you as an MSP to differentiate your backup and recovery offering with smarter data management and protection. We'll be showing some of the latest features within the technology before answering uh, your questions at a part of uh, live Q&A. Uh, for those who do not know Field Trust very well, a short introduction. Uh, Ed, could you go to the next slide? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so we are a uh, value added distributor um, uh, based in Belgium who is a 100% channel. Uh, we're pretty young. We were uh, uh, founded in 2016, so we have uh, around 400 resellers in the Benelux and Franks today with uh, around 16,000 end user companies. Um, we hold very dearly to the added value reason why we don't sell hundreds of products, but only 10 international brands today, because we want to know the products we sell so we can actually deliver the, uh, the uh, added value we promise our resellers and our, uh, our vendors. Um, what we offer is, is a very close relationship with our partners. Um, and we offer everything from A to Z, from sales training support, technical training, uh, pre and after sales, product information, and webinars like these. So I'd like to give the word to uh, Ed Renrick, who's going to host this uh, webinar and tell you more about uh, Red Store. Thank you very much, Bart, and, and hello, everyone. Um, we'll try and keep this to around 20, 25 minutes and then uh, time for some Q&A afterwards. So just a very brief kind of overview of who Red Store are. Um, actually, the most important part in that, that entire slide for me is actually the top right bit, the years experience. We've been around for 24 years, um, but Red Store as an organization were, were in fact the managed service provider for about 18, 19 of those years before we we bought the, we acquired the um, the vendor of the software at the time, and that's what we turned, we've turned into the the product that you see now. Why that's meaningful is we have we've walked in your shoes, um, and we've kind of gone through the pain barriers of being a, a reseller and MSP, going through that that maturity path and dealing with vendors um, and, and all of the, uh, the ups and downs that come with that. So we've tried to limit the amount of bad experiences and increase the amount of good experiences you have with us as a vendor. And there's loads of areas that we've done that to differentiate, not just at a product level, but how we, how we work with our partners via organizations like Field Trust. We've got about 40,000 global customers at the moment and we are headquartered out of the UK but we have a presence globally. Um, we are um, connected to the, the standard hyperscalers that everybody knows and loves and some hate, the Microsofts, the Googles, the Amazons of this world and we have integration into the virtualization platforms like VMware and, and more specifically Hyper-V. Microsoft is a, is a, a very strong area for Red Store and we'll, we'll cover that in, in further slides. Normally we have, um, uh, we try to provide sovereignty for our customers. So in the UK we have physical data center deployments in North America, in South Africa and elsewhere. But we do leverage the hyperscalers a lot now to provide sovereignty, quick deployment, scalability and all of the benefits that come with, with hyperscale public cloud environments. Okay, so Red Store's delivering what we call smart data management and protection for MSPs all over the world with a single unified platform that's delivering protection for the infrastructure, protection for SaaS data, cloud data, and application support as well. With no requirement for hardware, a pricing model based on data selected for protection, which we'll come into later, and a scalable model, pricing and billing is simple, and you can make up to 80% margin um, when, when you compare that to some of our competitors, such as, uh, I will pick on some for the sake of this call, the Veeam um, and, and organizations like that are quite prevalent. 
we rarely see the partners making more than maybe 10 to 20 to 25 points. Our partners at the moment are enjoying upwards of 40%, and in some cases, 80, 90, even more. And as mentioned, Red Store is built for MSPs. We were an MSP ourselves, so we've designed this specifically for multi-tenancy and all of the all of the day-to-day -day, uh, features that you guys will need to be able to run your customer's data protection platform in a, in a meaningful way. So we, it, we've been built as a cloud-first solution. This is not predicated on any hardware. Again, it gives you a little bit more control over what the customer is using in their own environment. And this means that there's no reliance, because there's no reliance on hardware, we've got a full truly multi-tenanted approach. We can deploy this very rapidly and get, get this out to your customers within minutes, not days or weeks waiting for hardware to, uh, to be delivered. But it's not just about, now we've, we've, we've covered three areas on here. This is all about maximizing your margins as I've, as I've highlighted. Smart data management in terms of having everything in, in one place. So, and, and again, I'll, I'll widen into the, the, the actual portfolio and what we protect in later slides. And it's, it is absolutely about being built for multi-tenancy, built for you guys to manage multiple. We manage all of our customers on this platform, all of our partners on this platform. Um, so it is absolutely built for that purpose. Now, it's not just about the margin that you make on a price per gig. So our pricing model is, is very different to anyone else's. Um, we look at the data selected for protection, not stored data, not what's on the volume. It's not about the amount of users that you have. We don't penalize the customer for how they've architected their environment. They may not have moved into a fully virtualized environment. They may have a particular ratio of host to guest. None of that has any bearing on the pricing with Red Store. It is a nice and simple, predictable way of looking at it, which is the data that your customers select to protect. That is the data that we will charge against. So it's always based on the last backup not all backups, not on volumes and things like that. But beyond that, that margin that you can make at a price per gig per month basis, that recurring revenue, repeatable margin that you guys can make, there's other features built into the offering from Red Store by way of the Field Trust. And some of those elements include a trial platform. So full production capability, but an ability for you to bring your customers on let them try it out before they buy and potentially use that as a, as a seeding mechanism to enhance your chances of winning the deal. We have an insight platform because we, as I mentioned, were software-based, we are able to drop an agent on an endpoint, whether that's a physical or virtual machine, a laptop, a desktop, whatever that endpoint may be. But that allows us to draw copious amounts of telemetry back from that endpoint so that you guys as the MSP can go into your customers on a on a maybe a quarterly basis, a monthly basis, whatever level of frequency you guys want to, to do and what's appropriate with our customer. But it means we can go in in a non-selling engagement at a service at a service level and talk about what's going on with their endpoint. So when did they last access data? What type of data do they have on the endpoint? What data is eligible for archive? How much, how much space is on that endpoint? And what can we do to save space? So you have this kind of meaningful interface that allows you to engage with your customers, not necessarily at a sales level, at an operational level, at, a, at an intellectual level, to be able to talk, have reasons to go in and talk to your customers about what they're doing with the data. <clears throat> now, beyond that, we have other things like seeding. We have a process for seeding, which we, we typically don't charge for. That is an, an area that you guys can get involved in and at a discretionary level, you can add value commercially to your own back end, or you can add intellectual value to the buyer because you are providing that as part of the service at no additional cost. Another great area that we have that adds value for, for you guys is our reporting function. We have around 300 pre-built canned reports. 
uh, around all types of output from what their data is doing at a backup level. They can be sent daily, weekly, hourly. They can be customized. So this might be something you you add as a as a standard feature, uh, you know, with very baseline information. And if they want anything more, an enhanced view of the world, if you like, you guys can charge an admin fee for that kind of activity. So really, it's it's not just about the, the obvious benefits, it's about some hidden feature-based benefits that are built in by Red Store to allow you guys, the MSP, to make more market share on every deal, either at an intellectual level or the commercial level at your own discretion. Now, smart data management utilizes the AI to detect and remove suspicious files from backup. So this is something we've incorporated predominantly for endpoints at the moment, but this is giving you another reason to talk to your customers. We're not just protecting their data, we're offering them a full managed service around the, the health of their data and, and keeping it protected. We all know on this call that you can make all the provision in the world at the front end to stop malicious hackers and, and all of these uh, malware threats that exist these days. Um, but always something is potentially going to squeak through. And we know that because we see some very big reputable names um, getting, getting hit by these kind of attacks. So what can the customers do to, to limit that? Well, we can start introducing something like malware detection in, in the backup process. And that is built in with Red Store. But for you, the MSP, this is, again, something that's very sticky. It gives you a really good reason to go back and talk to your customer because AI is driven by repetition. So you can imagine at, at, at the start of the engagement, it's going to be a lot of time with your customer working out what are suspicious, what are not suspicious, understanding the nature and, and activity of what files are, are, are being produced and, and brought into that environment. And over time, the AI then starts becoming AI and actually taking over those functions. So it, it limits the time over time that you spend with your customers, but it gives you good reason to go back to these guys. Now, look, you can see from, from the slide, there's a lot of reasons why you can trust Red Store as a, as a vendor, as a, as, a, as a solution, as a set of software. Um, uh, but some of the elements on here I've already touched on. One I haven't touched on is this cloud first approach that we have. We aren't based on uh, hardware locally, very much different to the traditional guys that we've all come to, to love, who've been around since the day dot, since for 20, 30 years in some cases. And, and that software is not written for the world that we live in now. Version three of IT, which is all on demand, it's all .NET, it's all based online. And Red Store are very much at the forefront of that capability. So because it's software only, we can put this on any, on any device. We can attach to any cloud service within seconds, within minutes. And we can limit that, that, that downtime that those guys are getting and giving them instant access to that, to that data. And that leads me nicely on to what we call instant data. And this is a unique tool that Red Store have developed specifically for DR. Now, one of the big differentiators for Red Store is not actually how we back up files because there's very little differentiation in our marketplace between ourselves and the other 100 or so organizations who are backing up data. The difference becomes, becomes apparent beyond that that process, that backup process. How, how quickly can you recover that data for your customers when they need it the most? And what we've developed is effectively a Netflix view of disaster recovery. So if we, if we think about a, a DR scenario right now, we've got, we've got a bit of science to apply to the recovery process. We've got a machine, it's, it's popped out, it's unavailable. We need to rebuild that machine get all of the data back so the users can start working again. And typically, in a traditional recovery scenario, that means 20 minutes to 30 minutes to get your OS up, and then potentially days, week, depending on the bandwidth 
and the amount of data that needs to get pushed down the pipe that will dictate that length of time. An average 10 terabytes over 100 meg is going to take about five and a half to six days to do that. Now, what Netflix have done, uh, sorry, what Red, Red Store have done is designed a Netflix view of the data so that while that recovery is going on in the background, the users can access the data instantly. So if we think of Netflix, we, we go onto a single pane of glass, we can see lots of movies, documentaries, content, if you will, but none of that content is held locally on your endpoint, your laptop or your mobile phone, whatever it is you, you're going into Netflix from. None of that is physically on your machine. It's not until you click the item that you want that Netflix starts streaming that back to you to get access to it. Well, we work in exactly the same way with recovering files. So you get a Windows view with the files that the users now are able to drive into because it's, it's something that they recognize. So they can go into the folders, find the files that they want, and just down, double click that. It opens up like a normal file from the Red Store Cloud, and that user can read and write on that file and save changes while the recovery of their machine is going on in the background. So it means that we've moved from a week and a half to get a, your hands on your data <clears throat> to minutes. Minutes without the premium that you would associate with this kind of delivery mechanism to your data. And again, I think just the last one is that predictability on the pricing. Because we've got that data selected model, there is, there is no ambiguity in, in what, you're going to, what your customers are going to be billed for. And by, net, by proxy of that, what you guys are going to be billed for from, from Field Trust. It is always very predictable. It's always in arrears. And it's always on the last backup, which everybody can see from the daily reports that they're being sent. So it's a much... It's a much more honest way we feel of licensing for data protection. It would be very easy for us to build 50, 60 different line items for a licensing model, but we don't see any merit in that because it just serves to confuse you guys, the MSPs. And if you guys are confused, then the customers are also going to be confused by licensing models as well. So our, our MO is to keep everything as simple as possible from licensing to working with us from day-to-day -day process to the actual software and the use of the software itself. So what does that mean in terms of a, a, a portfolio, guys? What's, what I find enjoyable, I've, I've been in this industry 24 years. Normally, when I've joined a vendor, we have reams of slides explaining everything that we do. Because of the simplicity of the licensing model, it takes away a lot of that. What we would typically see is pre-sales work, trying to scope out an entire environment where all the dependencies are and all of that intricate conversational stuff that we have to do at the front end to qualify an opportunity. Very different when you're dealing with Red Store because we don't bail against any of those, those elements within their infrastructure. All we need to care about now is how much data the customer needs to protect, whether that's in 365 or Google or Kubernetes, or whether that's local data that they want to move off and protect in another, in another place. So just to simplify this, this diagram a little, down the left-hand side, these are all of the areas that Red Store protect. So as you can see at the top is much more kind of software driven. These are cloud solutions, the likes of Salesforce, Kubernetes. That's very specifically Kubernetes on Azure right now. We are moving across to AWS. We have protection of zero built into that. And then the obvious ones that we know everybody over the last 12 months have really dived into uh, head first is Google and, and much more predominantly the Microsoft 365 platform, which again presents a phenomenal opportunity for our partners. The ease of which that this platform can be protected and the way that we've architected this, which I'll get onto another slide, makes us very different in the market around how we protect the Microsoft environment. Obviously, we can also protect Azure infrastructure 
databases, SQL predominantly. We can protect the likes of uh, SAP and Oracle, but we don't have the integration. They don't really allow that, as you guys will know, if you deal with either of those organizations to have their own hardware for backing up their databases. So we are very much focused predominantly on SQL databases, and that lends itself to that uh, deep relationship we have with Microsoft. Obviously, we all know uh, over the last 12 months, a lot of what we've typically seen as unstructured data has been held locally on file shares. Over the last 12 months, we've seen a, a, a big migration of that local data being hoofed into the likes of SharePoint. Um, and, and we're seeing that more and more now. So again, whether it's unstructured locally or whether it's unstructured into the Microsoft Cloud, that's data that we can protect. Servers, whether they be physical or virtual, because we work outside of the hypervisor layer, we actually go inside the virtual machine. We can operate at the host down, but we typically prefer to put our agents in the virtual machine. This gives us a lot more control over the recovery process, especially if the horse goes down. It takes away the dependencies for recovery as well. <clears throat> and then finally, network shares, and obviously endpoints. This is a, a, a red store I used a lot because we're agent-based, because we don't charge on agent deployment, you could in, your customer could deploy this on a thousand endpoints, and until they select some data to back up, no charge gets associated. But let's say every user backed up a one, a one meg file and we had 20 users, we'd only be backing up 20 meg. That's all they would be billed for 20 meg, just to make that very clear. Within the middle of the, of the wheel, these are the features that we provide as standard. So within that single price point that I described earlier, all of the features and the, the areas that we protect are built in. There's nothing else to pay. There's nothing hidden. We don't slap you with a bill further down the line because you've stored a bit more data on the back end than we told you about in front. None of that. Very predictable. All of this is built in and switched on from day one. So we have the standard backup and recovery. We have full disaster recovery, full machine build. We have an archive function. And if you recall earlier, I mentioned the the capability we draw down from the telemetry of the agent, this allows us to work out used capacity and available capacity based on access to data. So as an example, we can look from that, from that pane of glass and we can see, let's say a customer's got a laptop that is 99% full at a production level. We can look and go on a drop down menu Actually, X, X percentage of your files haven't been accessed in three months. Now that we've backed them up, they're eligible for archive. We can remove them from the primary source, leave the copy in the Red Store Cloud, and leave a stub, which means you can use instant data to just drag that back on a double click. But it means, more importantly, we're managing the capacity on the local endpoint. So you guys are then managing that capacity for your, for your customers in a proactive way. And everything on the right hand side, guys, is effectively the destination targets. Where can we deliver your customer's data to? Does it need to be Azure, in anger, or in, a, in an environment that's already pre-built? Do, do we need to deliver that back to on-prem or an endpoint, or back into your cloud as the partner, or somewhere else that may be? The, the, the thing to glean from here is, Everything's built in and you have complete flexibility on the recovery process, which as I alluded to at the beginning, is the most important cog in the whole wheel of data protection. Okay, so what does it look like? At a very high level, <clears throat> and it really doesn't matter where the, the customer sits at this point, where in the world they sit. So if you look over at the other side, on the left hand side we've got the endpoints and we've got all of the typical kind of operating systems and typical applications that we see that we tend to support so it's it's windows it's linux it's apple it's vmware hyper-v obviously sql and and we still protect uh, local exchange where 
it's not very prevalent these days, but it does still exist. We have integration into uh, things like Capita Sims. They're, these are management systems for the education sector. And as you can see, all of this is remotely managed through that console that you guys would have access to. You then effectively work out what access rights, if any, you want to give to your customers, what view of the world they want to see, what ability you want to give them, whether you're offering a full or partial or non-managed service into your customer. Again, you have the flexibility depending on their maturity to, to take a view on what you offer to these guys. As you can see, typically we look to deploy, in most regions, we look to deploy um, physical data centers, but again, we still follow the, the replicated principle, whether we are deploying in our physical data centers in the likes of UK or, or ZA, but in, um, in the likes of Europe, we've deployed dual nodes on the hyperscale environments, which are completely separated at a network level for um, security purposes. And effectively what we're doing is taking a backup and then replicating that backup into another place. So not only do you have a copy, a, a, a stored and protected copy, but we then copy that copy and put it somewhere else. At a security level, which I haven't touched on guys, all of our data at rest is protected at 256 and in transit 128. The encryption key is set by the end user. Are you guys depending on the relationship you have with those, and that is unique to them. Red Store and Field Trust never know what that is. And again, so in terms of dealing with things like malware threats, this is something we do almost on a daily basis at the moment. You can't encrypt encrypted files, so it makes it very easy for us to find a clean point in time to roll back to, deploy the instant data tool, and your customers back up and running within minutes, and they can tell uh, the uh, threat act does where to stick that ransom fee. And, and the last bit on this slide, guys, is local copy. This is very unique to Red Store. Not in that we provide a local copy, but we don't actually charge for your customers having a local copy. A lot of our peers, our, our competitors in the market, charge for the right to store your data locally. Red Store build that into the, to the solution. So it always goes to the Red Store cloud first, wherever that may be going in the world. But then the customer has a, an option to store data locally as much and as many recovery points as they, they see fit to do. Because in all of this, guys, you know, to be honest, the single point of failure is going to be the network connection. That is the, that is the main thing we need to worry about. Well, if the customer has a local copy, or he's got poor bandwidth on a particular given day, it allows him to do that instant stream and that instant data tool, tool in that I mentioned, that can all be run from the local copy as well. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll run into a very short demo. I'm going to show you a full system uh, restore at a server level, and then we're going to show you how we recover some mail items in the 365 platform. So if you keep in mind that Netflix view of the world that I mentioned uh, in the back of your mind, and that should become apparent through this, this next demo. Hello, and welcome to this Red Store video where we're going to cover a full system recovery using a combination of Red Store's methods, using full system recovery and instant data permanent all from our Red Store app from a web browser. So let's start by logging into the Red Store app using your Red Store username and password. And we'll move over to the left-hand side where I have an area called machines. This is where all my Windows, Linux, and Mac infrastructure will sit. So if I browse into the first card, you can see a dashboard showing how many laptops I'm backing up, how many enterprise server editions I'm backing up, and we can see how much data has grown over the last few months. So in this case, I'm going to go into my UK data center, go into my servers group, and here you will see a whole list of my servers that have been backing up to the Red Store service. So in this demonstration, I'm going to recover this Windows host that's currently backing up 67 gig to the Red Store service. 
So first of all, let me just show you remote management so I can show you how the agent itself has been configured. So if we click on the three little dots on the right hand side and I choose download remote agent and run that tool, This will then make a remote connection to the Red Store Enterprise Server Edition agent wherever in the world this device is. And this is the agent that is doing the heavy lifting. As you can see, I'm protecting the C drive and the L drive. There are some exclusions, but I have enabled what we call full system backup, which is our full disaster recovery. This means that in the event of a disaster, not only can I recover any files and folders that have been selected, um, some SQL data or the system state, but I can actually recover the entire system in the event of a disaster. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So let's come off the system and I'm now back on my desktop where I've got Hyper-V in waiting in the background. So let's start the DR procedure by again highlighting the machine that I want to restore. So I'm going to click on the three little dots and this time I'm going to choose recover using instant data. This is our disaster recovery tool. So that's going to download and we're going to open that utility up. So in this case we're going to do full system disaster recovery. So I'm going to choose the bottom option but in a second we will look at instant data permanent file recovery because we're going to combine two different methods to speed up the recovery process. So I'm going to launch full system recovery. And now I'm prompted, whereabouts am I going to recover that server from? So the default will always be the Red Store's cloud. However, if you've implemented our local copy, you could recover from the on-premise backup points. But in this case, I'm going to recover from the cloud. And before I can access any of that data, of course, I need to provide a valid encryption key. Now that I've provided a valid encryption key, I can, of course, then choose any of the historical backups stored with Red Store. So by default, we'll always keep four months worth of retention. But if you want to customize that, let us know. We can always crank that up for you. So in this case, I'm going to recover the last version of this system. Um, and also, I can choose where my recovery target's going to be. Now, I could do bare metal recovery. I could recover directly to Azure. I could recover directly to VMware via vSphere. But in this case, I'm actually going to recover to Hyper-V. So I'm going to choose a local virtual disk. And of course, then, if I pull the drop down, you can see I can recover to a VHD or a VHDX for Hyper-V. But I can also output a flat VMD. K for VMware. So in this case, I'm going to be restoring to Hyper-V. So I'm going to choose a VHDX. And then I need a location on my server of where I'm going to restore this to. So I'm going to pop that into my Hyper-V data center folder. Now, if I was to kick off the restore right now, this particular date and time, that server was 67 gig. Now, if this server was maybe used as a file server and a domain controller, I might be interested in just getting the bootable C drive back and worry about the data disk later. So what I'm going to in fact do is click on the configure volume settings and then hit next. Now that the volume system configuration is loaded, I can see that my server has two physical disks. Disk 1, volume 1 is the boot partition. Disk 1, volume 2 is the C drive and that equates to 51 gig of data that I'll need to restore. And I can also see that the partition size is 126 gig. Now I know disk 2 is only 14 gig, um, but what I'm going to do is I want to demonstrate how I can recover this 14 gig using the Red Store instant data permanent recovery. Again, reducing the restore time of this server. So in fact, my restore is now going to be just disk 1, which is 51 gig. So we'll kick that restore off now and we will analyze the performance once the restore has finished.
Okay, fantastic. So as you can see, the full system disaster recovery has completed in little over 30 minutes, and we now have the C drive ready to add into Hyper-V and boot up. So let's hit close, and I make my way to my Hyper-V data center folder. There is the restored disk, and you can see it's 46 gig in size. This is the operating system drive that we recovered. So what we must do now is go into Hyper-V and create a new virtual machine and follow the wizard So in this case, I chose to restore to a VHDX, which is a Generation 2 virtual disk. Assign some memory for the virtual machine. So in this case, I'm going to attach to an existing virtual disk and browse to my D drive Hyper-V data center. And there is the disk that I've just restored and click open and then click next and then to finish we'll compile that virtual machine and we'll simply power on that machine and then connect to it in the Hyper-V manager. So now that my Windows host has booted up, let me add in the password. So now that my server has booted up into Hyper-V, I can have a look in Explorer. And as you can see, only the C drive is currently present and is on a partition of 126 gig, as it would have looked like beforehand. So now we must go back to Hyper-V and add another virtual disk to recover the data drive. So now we're back in Hyper-V Manager. Uh, we must turn off that machine before we can add the virtual disk. And then we'll go into Settings. And then we'll uh, select the drive settings and add a new virtual disk. And we'll go through the settings here and I'll choose the area of where I want to store that new virtual disk. So I'll stick that back on the D drive where I stored the other VHDX virtual disk. Okay, fantastic. So we'll go through the other settings just to initialize the disk and uh, create a partition size. Okay, all is good. So we'll click OK to that. And now what we can do is again start that virtual machine and connect into the Hyper-V console. And we'll just speed up a little bit just getting into that virtual machine. Okay, so now we've got the virtual machine. Let's go into Disk Manager. And what we'll be able to do is under Disk, we'll obviously see a disk that's not been allocated yet. So wait for those disks to load. There it is. There's a disk that's uh, unknown. So we right click on that, create a new volume, go through the settings of uh, creating that new virtual disk and formatting that new drive. So we'll have that set as an L drive as the original machine. And we'll just get that formatted. OK, great. So now you'll see I've got an L drive presented to my server. And of course, we go into that folder that is obviously empty. There's no data on there. So I've already put the Red Store instant data application on the desktop within the virtual machine. Now this is key. We can now use instant data permanent file recovery and again connect into Red Store's data center. 
we'll have to provide a valid encryption key. So we'll type that in. Excellent. So we'll put instant data permanent application over on the left and we'll go and find our empty L drive and put that over on the right. Okay, so what we now need to do is explore that L drive and as you can see, I can see all of the historical backups that Red Store have been taking. Uh, and if we plus out the file server area, you'll see all of my users and we look at Andy. Andy's got all of the various test data as, as all of the other users. So we'll drag and drop the file server folder from Red Store's cloud over to that empty folder. And if you look at the bottom left hand side of the screen, you'll see the instant data permanent restore create the stub files. And now it's busy with the upload in this case of 14 gig. But if you look at the percentage, we're not even 1% complete on the recovery. But if we go over to the right hand side in a second, and look in the file server folder, and if we choose a user, let's look at Simon. Simon's got his, uh, his files there, and if we scroll down, we can see all of those files, but they're not restored yet until Simon, in this case, double clicks on his PDF for GDPR. I might take a, a second to load, but as a priority, Simon will get the file that he wants to have a look at. So we can scroll down in that file. That's great. We've got that file. So if we uh, maybe perhaps go and look at another file. So let's scroll down. Let's see if we've got some other files in, in here. Again, it doesn't really matter what the file is. What will happen is as the user requests that file, that will go to the top of the priority. And there we go. We've got our Red Store technical support guidelines for logging support cases. So quick recap, it took us 30 minutes to recover the bootable partition, and then we added the L drive, then we're able to use instant data permanent to drag all of the data, and the users are none the wiser that the recovery is still in progress. They're happy, they can get their data. Thanks ever so much for watching this video. And now guys, just a very quick uh demo on how we recover uh, an email item from the 365 platform hello and welcome to this red store video where we're going to cover the backup and selection of microsoft 365. once we're logged in here over on the left hand side you'll see the products that are available for me to configure so i'm going to click on microsoft 365 and over on the right hand side there is an add button then I can choose Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams. So I'm going to start off with Exchange, and then it's going to ask that it needs permission to access your Microsoft 365 tenant. So I'm going to click on Next, and I'm going to get redirected to log in with those credentials. There are some terms and conditions that you need to accept. We are going to extract data from Microsoft 365. And of course, in a recovery, we're going to need to put the data back. So you need to accept those terms and conditions. And that's it. We're all ready to run our backup. And over on the right hand side, there's a button here called recover. So I'm going to click on recover. And now I can see all of the departments that I have chosen for backup. In this case, I can see my Adam Cronin user. So in this case, I can either choose the full user's mailbox, which is 2.7 gig, and I can choose uh, a number of dates and times that have been performed. Or in this case, I'm going to click on the view button, which will allow me to browse all of the dates and times into my user's mailbox into that user's inbox, and then I can see any mail items that have been received. So in this case, I'm gonna go and choose a number of my emails here. That's fine, and then I'm gonna hit the recover button. Now, I'm prompted that I need to authenticate with Microsoft 365, so I'm gonna click on continue, and this will take me off to sign in under my Office 365 tenant. So I'm gonna click on next, You can see at the bottom of the screen, Recover to the Cloud has started, and we're now waiting for the Red Store app to complete the restore. Now that the restore is completed, I can instruct the user to go back to their Outlook, 
and within their inbox structure you'll see that there is a red store restore folder and if we look at all of the different dates and times we'll see the restore that's been performed today and then we're able to drill into that user's mailbox inbox and see the items that I've just restored so it's simple as that thanks ever so much for watching guys just to summarize before we we move into we've probably got not much time for Q&A but uh, just to summarize guys so we've got a, a, a very simple unified management interface you can mul manage multiple com customers with multiple environments from one pane of glass we've it's very fast to deploy multi-tenanted um, solution and as you've just seen they're very quick uh, and flexible in terms of how we recover your customer's data. Very simple pricing model. None of this complex licensing that we, we talked about earlier. No predication for hardware. One simple price per gig per month and very predictable for these guys. And finally, all everything in one place. You've got the ability to do AI detection, your backup, recovery, archive, protect all of your cloud data, protect all of your on-prem data, protect all of your mobile workers, all from one place on behalf of your customers. Right, guys, so that is the end of the slides. Um, uh, Nathan, do we have time for questions? Yeah, absolutely. It looks like we've got a couple, so I guess we'll just rattle through a few and, uh, and go from there. Uh, so the first one, Ed, is just how does the Red Store solution handle encryption? That's a great question. I did uh, touched on it very briefly. It, it, the encryption level is something that we take very seriously. And one of the reasons why we tick a lot of boxes at a, at a cyber essentials kind of insurance uh, policy level, lots of organizations that work with us are actually working with us more and more recently to help reduce their excess on their insurance, bring their overall premium down. And because of the high levels of encryption, one of the reasons is the high levels of encryption that we adopt on all of the data. So as I mentioned, customer chooses their own encryption key. That can be whatever they want it to be. That is only known to them. And, and all of the data at rest is encrypted at 256 bit. Once it moves into transit mode, we're still encrypting that data at 128. So 256 in, in, in A, 128 as it moves, and then 256 again while it gets to the other end. So extremely high levels of encryption to kind of safeguard your customers from all of the malicious threats that are out there right now. Thanks, Ed. And um, we just had another question in from Joe. Uh, so the question is, suppose you do a full system backup of a laptop, the laptop crashes and the disk needs to be replaced. Can you boot with an agent? Sorry, what was that? You just cut out on the last, last bit of the question. It's, it's, so it's, uh, if a laptop crashes and the disk needs to be replaced, could you boot with an agent? Well, no, if the disk needs to be replaced, that's a hardware failure. That would make it very difficult to, to run the laptop. The, the reality is, though, they would be able to, on a temporary basis, access their files from whatever they need to get to um, on a temporary machine. It might be that they use the mobile app on the laptop and it's a single file they need to get back. It may be that they've gone to a meeting and they've got access to another machine, at which point we can we can bring that, that desktop view into there and they can get through the files and folders using the instant data tool so they can at least still work. So whether it's a, if it's a laptop and it crashes at a hardware level, you can access your data through an app on your mobile phone or as soon as you can get to another endpoint, you can get access to your data. Uh, so just followed up. So it'd be a case of reinstalling the laptop, reinstalling the agent and then doing a restore. It would be yeah. in in that kind. If we're having a hardware failure inside the laptop, then yeah, it would potentially be a hardware replacement. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Joe. Um, Pierre Michael has asked, um, 
What about immutability of backups? Well, we've got the immutabilities built in on it at, a, at a few levels. One, at the encryption level. Two, at the fact that we have this rep, the data replicated in two, two points. But we also have a staging platform in between that. So if the worst outcome happened and someone managed, managed to get in and delete data from the primary backup, let's say, we have a staging area where, where files are deleted, as an example, we hold them in a, in a third place so that we can restore them and we hold those for a period of time. So we built immutability in it in, in a number of levels within the solution. Brilliant. Thanks, Ed. And uh, looks like there's just one last one, um, which is quite a good one, I think. Uh, are people able to trial the solution? Yes, and that's something we, we actively promote. You guys as an MSP would absolutely be able to, to trial the platform to see if it's fit for purpose for your own customers. And by proxy of that, your customers um, can trial the platform as well. So we normally run those between 14 and 30 days, depending on the requirement, but that is very quick to set up. 365, Google, most of the cloud services take no more than about four minutes to actually set up. If we're deploying an agent, that maybe takes maybe five to 10 minutes, but all of this is very quick to initiate. Typically, a demo normally runs for about an hour. Trial, normally we, in terms of time taken to set up a trial, normally 30 to 45 minutes to, to do that, and then they can, they can run it full production level. Brilliant, thanks, Ez. I think that's it for the questions, unless anyone has any last ones they wanna put into the uh, chat or the, the Q&A window. No, it doesn't look like it. I think, so is, is that, that it for questions, Nath? Yeah, I think so. All right, lovely. Well, we've, we've five minutes early. So look, I just want to say, but I'm sure Bart will want to come in and, and wrap the call up. But just from my perspective, guys, thank you very much for joining. Um, if you do, do have any more, um, if you need any more information or you want to have a, a, a look at the, the platform, discuss anything that we've gone through or more, get in touch with, with Bart over at Field, Field Trust and we can, we can set up whatever you guys need. Bart, do you want to do a, a little wrap up yourself? Okay, thank you very much everyone for, uh, for joining us today. Thank you Ed for your presentation uh, and, uh, and the videos. Um, we'll be sharing this uh, recording with everyone who uh, enrolled into the, the webinar. So thank you everyone and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.